is to be able to combine forces um, and find out what the resulting force is if something's pulling in different directions. Um, we're going to look at some where we're talking about a plane that's flying and the wind is acting on the plane. A boat is in the ocean and the current is acting on it. How do we figure out well, where do they actually end up? Um, so, let's look at just two plane or regular forces. We call them F sub 1 and F sub 2. They have a magnitude of 30 pounds and 10 pounds respectively. So, F1 is 30, F2 is 10. The direction of F1 is north 20 degrees east. The direction of F2 is south 65 degrees east. We're going to find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force round to the nearest 10. Okay, so let's draw a picture, okay, just so that we get a visual of what's going on. Force 1 is north 20 degrees east, okay, so we start on the north-south line and we go 20 degrees towards east. So we've done that in the color. <clears throat> okay, force one, north 20 degrees east. This is 20 degrees right here, and it has a magnitude. I'm just going to write the magnitude at the end, a magnitude of 30. Force two is south 65 degrees east. So this is force two. I actually made it a little bit too long because its magnitude is only 10, but use my imagination to pretend the blue line is longer than the green line. All right, so to combine forces, you wrote down the steps yesterday, you have to begin by breaking them into their components. So we need to find the component form of force one and the component form of force two. So to find the component form of force one, it is the magnitude times the cosine of the angle. Do I use 20 degrees? No. No. I'm supposed to use the angle that's made with the positive x-axis. So... What is the angle that's made with positive? 70. 70. Okay, so I'm going to plug in 70. And my y coordinate is 30 sine of 70 degrees. I'm going to save the crunching the numbers to the end. I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. Force 2 is 10 cosine of, what should I use? You have two options, okay? Do what? 25, do I use positive 25? Um, I can use negative 25. Or okay. You can use uh, 165. Mm, not 165. Oh, 260. Yeah. 270 plus 65. So we yeah, could use 335. Okay, we could use 335 or we could use negative 25. Now, it's a little bit faster to write negative 25, so I'm going to go with that one. If you don't like negatives, then use positive 335. Doesn't really matter. Alright, so the resultant is going to add those two together. So just to kind of keep my um, calculations precise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm in degree mode. And then I'm just going to type in 30 cosine of 70 Close my parentheses, plus 10 cosine of negative 25. I'm going to go ahead and add my x components together. I get 19.324. I know it says round to the nearest tenth, but that's referring to the final answer, so let's keep a few extra decimals right now. Let's do this for the y's. The easiest way to do is press second, enter, and change your cosines to sines. Saves you a little bit of time. And we get 23.965. So the resultant vector is in which quadrant? The first quadrant. Which makes sense in this case. I don't know exactly where in the first quadrant, but it makes sense that it would be between these two forces. But it makes sense that it would be in the first quadrant because the, the force 1 is greater than force 2. Um, so if there was a question, um, say it asked, in which, uh, which, um, which direction is the resultant closer to? Okay, it's closer to force one, or it's being pulled in the direction of force one, as opposed to the direction of force two. Okay, because it's in its quadrant. Um, okay, so we want the magnitude and the direction, though. That's just the component form. So remember how we find magnitude? We uh, 
take the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared Nineteen point three two four squared plus twenty three point nine six five squared. And you could get even more precise in, in calculating this, but it's pretty sufficient. Okay. So the resulting force is thirty point seven eight five. Well, that said, the round to inner tenth, so thirty point eight pounds. This is a real world application problem, so you should use. Units, pounds does not have a period after it. Okay, that's the resultant force. So it's a little bit greater than the strongest force, which makes sense because we're adding some force to it. But not too much greater because it's not pulling in the exact same direction. The last thing we've got to figure out is the direction. So we want to do the inverse tangent. Our angle is equal to the inverse tangent of our y over our x. And that gives us an angle of 51.1 degrees. Do we have to do anything to that? No, we do not, because our resultant vector is in the first quadrant. 51.1 degrees is in the first quadrant um, as well. So we're good in those regards. All right. So the key is you always have to break your forces down into components and then um, put the components together. And then after that point, you don't deal with the components anymore. All your calculations are based on your resultant vector. Okay. After you get that resultant vector, all your calculations come from that. Okay, so